Reef Dudes is sponsored by Ecotech Marine and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're going to get a one year review on the ReefBot Lab. What's going on guys, Dev from Reef Dudes. So I've been running the ReefBot Lab for just shy of a year now. Um, I believe it was early, mid-November when I originally set it up. And we're now at the beginning of October, so a couple weeks short of a year. So this is more or less, for all intents and purposes, going to be considered a, a one year review on it. 11 and a half months, take it how you will. Um, so, so far, um, it hasn't missed a beat. It's been, not, hadn't had to replace any single parts. The only thing I've had to replace on it is just the needles on it, and that's part of the normal maintenance. Every 60 or so tests wants to replace it. Um, so it's been very, very solid. It's been issue free. There's a teeny little bit more noise that goes up and down now. So there is a, like a lead screw that it goes up and down. So I think I might just give that a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of oil on it. It should be back to nice and quiet. So roughly the tests I'm going to say on average take around half an hour to 40 minutes, somewhere in that range, depending on the test kit. I schedule mine to be in the middle of the night. So for the most part, they will test on at like, say, you know, one in the morning, two in the morning, three in the morning, kind of on the weekends. And I have my results, you know, usually on Sunday mornings and I can compare and check everything out. Now, just to know what I'm all using mine for. So currently I'm using, I have API calcium in there. I have Red Sea Magnesium Pro. I have uh, Tropic Marin NO3 Pro. I have Red Sea PO4. And I still have some more vials in there that I could be using for something else. Um, most people probably use Alkalinity as the next one. I haven't bothered because I also have other elk testers, so I just kind of kept that open for now. But there's lots of other tests that you can use for it, so I think I might do that at some point and take advantage of those extra two vial slots. So just for kind of an exhaustive list of what all can you test with it, there is a slew of different brands. And that's one thing that I appreciate with the ReefBot is it's very kind of universal. Like if you look at alkalinity, for instance, look how many different test kits and brands are in there. There is a slew. I'm not going to name them all because they'll be sitting here all day, but there is a ton of different brands. So we kind of just actually click through it. So calcium, you know, I'm using API. You can have a higher low range. You can see all the different brands. Some of these brands I haven't heard of, but I know they're like kind of European brands or different parts of the world. So it is really nice to be able to have a ton of options for test kits because this uses off the shelf test kits, right? So having whatever's available in your area is a big win. We go back into magnesium. Again, see all the ones that are in there. We got our nitrate. Um, now with nitrate, there's also nitrite. Those are basically the same test kits because they can usually do both. Um, phosphate, again, I'm using Red Sea Pro for that one. We got ammonia, we can test copper, we can test nitrite, we can test iodine, that might be actually interesting to play with one day. Um, pH test kits, uh, general hardness, chlorine, kind of interesting. Iron, if you're running refugium, that could be a good one to keep an eye on. Uh, bromine, silicon dioxide, don't even know what that one is. Uh, carbon dioxide, potassium, that's probably one that I'll use for my last test. Um, potassium can definitely affect the color coral, so it might be a really interesting one to pop into my 11 and 12 vial slots and kind of finish filling out the reef bot. So, long term. Um, the only thing I've had to do for really for maintenance on it is replace the needles a couple times. So every 60 or so tests, I believe it is, it wants to replace the needles and the syringes. So pretty darn easy maintenance on that one. It really takes a few minutes, pop out a screw, change out your needles, you're good to go for another few months. Now again, how often that is depends on how much you use it. So personally, I use mine basically once a week. So every weekend it goes through and tests, you know, my calcium, my mag, my nitrates, my phosphates. Now, just for a bit of a comparison sake on this one, just cause it was re relatively close and I just was comparing it this morning. So if I come down, look at the magnesium. So the magnesium here at two in the morning was 1320. If I look at my apex, my last test on the Trident was 13.34, and that was at midnight. So within two hours, I mean, 20 points off from mags, pretty dang close if you ask me. Um, overall, I mean, this design has been working really well. I know the original one used um, a linear actuator as well. Mine died at one point, I had to replace it. So I mean, a little bit of a pain, but it was fixable. This one uses a stepper motor and a lead screw. And I think it's a better design. It's been absolutely flawless. There's been zero issues with that. I do get a tiny bit of a louder noise on the lead screw, so that just means it needs a little bit of oil. Same with like in maintenance on a 3D printers type of thing, so I'll probably just put a couple little dabs of either cooking oil, machine oil, or something on it, and that should fix that and be back to silent again.
But yeah, overall, it's been solid so far. So I'm really happy to report. I've had no big issues with it. Um, it's been testing reliably weekly for me for, you know, just shy of a year. My only, honestly, my only real big complaint with the design of this is the lead for the power cord off of the back of this is extremely short. I really wish they had a longer cord with it. It's like a stupid gray, but I have to call it out. So it doesn't, it hangs, it won't sit on the ground. Like if you mount that on the wall or something, not a big deal. But I do wish they had a longer cord on it. Again, you could fix it really easy by buying a barrel plug extension cord, which one day I'll probably do. But aside from that, it's been pretty dang solid. Um, one thing to note, the, the light on it does stay on. You can unplug it. I mean, if it really bothers you, you can unplug it. Just the connector off the circuit board and it's done. I did ask them about it and said they might do an option in a future firmware update so you can control it. It's nice to know when it's testing because if it changes, you know, like the green or the red or whatever, you know when it's testing what it's doing. But when it's just on the rest of the time, if you have fish room, you don't care. You know, I see a bit of a blue glow from my office at night, so I don't really care. But it's one of those things would be cool to have a little more control over that. The big vials have been a pretty big plus for me. I, I do love the big vials. I guess the only consideration with them is make sure you're using reagent that has lots of life yet. Like don't dump in your almost expired reagent and kind of mix them together because I might throw off your results a little bit. So I guess that'd be the only one kind of consideration of using super big vials, especially if you don't test very often. But you know, even at weekly testing, I mean, these is last me ages, which is pretty sweet. I am just using mine on Wi-Fi, but there is a wired ethernet port, which is a really nice touch. I do appreciate having that option. <laughs> As you can see in the reflection, I actually got some ports right over there. So I really could wire it in, but it's been solid on Wi-Fi and hasn't caused any issues. So she's gonna leave it there. As far as hooking up, um, there is a four port here. I don't know if they ever released it, but I know there was talk about doing a doser. And I believe that's what that would be for, be able to kind of link it up with your doser. On the side here, we got tank water, RODI, and waste. So I got your three hoses to hook up. My waste goes directly to the drain, which is really easy. Tank obviously pulls from the tank, and RODI. I had a bit of a creative fix for this one. My actual ATO is over there. So what I did is I have the ATO filling this large beaker, and then overflows into the sump, and then I have the auto tester sucking from the be beaker. So this has me a nice like r reservoir that's always refilling itself of RO right beside the auto tester. So kind of a little little hack to make it work, but that worked out really well. And just taking a look inside, you can kind of see we got our two rails on the side with our lead screw in the middle. And same thing if we look down below, we got a secondary one down here with our stepper motor and the lead screw. And that moves the whole chassis of the needles up and down. And the second one above it is for lifting the plungers on the syringes. As it spins around, there is a little hole by each vial. So both plungers go up and down at the same time. And one goes to the bottle, one just goes in the empty space beside it. And I did wonder, is there gonna be anything that mess with the calibration? You know, is it gonna bend it or hit something on the side? But every time it moves around, there's little end stops that kind of resets it to an extent. And that keeps it, everything on it working really well. So that was pretty cool to see. Um, inside here, you got your little colorometer, so it does a little test as it's doing it, flashes the light after every drop, and it figures out what the color is, and it's basically automating your manual test kit. Um, and that goes a big way. So a big thing with robots, people always ask, how accurate is it? You know, is there any issues? The biggest thing, um, overall, I'm going to say it's pretty dang accurate, but if it wasn't calibrated properly, say, you, you know, you had your syringe a little bit off, at the end of the day, that doesn't overly matter like if your results a smidge off not a big deal the biggest thing is is it's consistent it is a robot doing the exact same test the exact same way every single week so you're gonna see your trends how they're changing you know so if it's you know a little bit off it doesn't matter it's identical trends and that goes a long way where most people you know if you do the human error you're gonna be testing a little bit different. Your results are gonna sway even more because it's not gonna have that same consistency. So I think that's one of the really biggest advantages of auto testers. I mean, especially if you're on the road, you're not home as much, or you're just lazy, you never test. Auto testing is a pretty sweet way to go. So there you guys have it, the one year update on the ReefBot Lab. So for me, it's been very solid. I did actually email them before I filmed this video to see if my discount code was still valid. And it is, so that's pretty sweet. Um, so if you use code ReefDudes, you get an extra bonus 100 bucks off. And if you couple that with the sale price right now, of 200 bucks off, then you get 300 bucks off. So that's a pretty sweet win. Um, so super stoked for that. Now, if I missed anything at all and you guys want to know, let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to either test it or get you guys an answer on it. Again, if you enjoyed this, as always, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure to subscribe. Catch you guys on the next video.